Things are quiet here at the Georgia Coliseum now. The 1990-91 season still off in the future. And no doubt, Georgia Bulldogs are going to miss the likes of Alec Kessler and Mike Heron, their seniors from this past season. But just like this Athens sunshine, the future of Georgia basketball is bright. Head coach Hugh Durham and assistants to Vester Anderson and Mark Sloniker have enjoyed one of their most productive recruiting efforts ever. But that new season is still a ways away, so that means that there's still time to relive this past season, the season that Georgia won the championship. Let's relive that season 25 years later. Lots changed over the last quarter century. These trees, my hair, but what has not changed is the significance of that 1990 SEC championship season. Uh, the 1990 year, we weren't predicted to do a whole bunch, uh, but I think we had a really good nucleus um, with Alec and, and Latero coming in and you know having a year up underneath this belt and us playing together. Uh, nobody really expected a lot from us, but you know preseason practice, we went at it pretty hard. We added uh, Sean Golden, like you mentioned, and some other guys, and um, so we were we were you know going in ready to battle. And uh, I don't think we anticipated what would happen that year. We just went out ready to battle. And, excited about it. So. As, he, as, as time went on and the way we took care of business on our home court, being 12-0, and 0, you know, uh, during that season, uh, never losing a game, you know, we knew there was something special and something magical about that season. I mean, everybody liked each other. Uh, everybody rallied around each other uh, because we knew we had the talent. I mean, we had an exceptional talent in Alec and Latero. Um, and we had big guards and we could defend, so we felt pretty confident, you know, that we can do some things if we stay together. And that's what our focus was, was on, to stay together and uh, compete as a team. Uh, going into the season, Coach Durham encouraged that each person play to their strength. Coming from a basketball program, my father was my head coach, and we went to four straight state championship games. Defense was always my strength. Even though I scored great points, I was able to come in and give a great ball handling mindset, a great IQ on the court, but defense was my strength. And the beautiful thing about that team, everyone on that team played to their strength and not to their weakness. The 1990 Bulldogs started their schedule with seven wins, only falling to Georgia Tech and Arizona State before heading into SEC play. Coming, going into conference play, I think our confidence was, was up. And then we had the first conference game, and that was against Kentucky, and I think that might have been Rick Pitino's first SEC game. Uh, I know it was the first game of, of, of his first year, our first game. Played at home, and I think we won. We put 106 up. After the Kentucky win to open SEC play, the Dogs struggled against Florida and Alabama, but then regrouped, beating Vanderbilt, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss. But the true test was going on the road against a very talented LSU team, but without the Dogs' leading scorer, Latterell Green, who was out with an injury. One of the most memorable games that was the, uh, the LSU game, of course, beating them in overtime. Uh, there in LSU and Rod Cole hit three free throws to put it in overtime and um, I think Latrell Green didn't even play that game. Jody Patton came in and, and had a, a big impact. I think he, had, he scored 17 or 19 points that game. That was a unique game, you know, going into that game, you know, they got the two biggest guys in the SEC with Stanley Roberts and Shaquille O'Neal. You're talking about having a great shooter in Chris Jackson. Um, you know, there were challenges, but again, we knew we could defend, we had big guards, and you know, that really was a mismatch for a lot of teams. So, 
That being said, we really had to focus on just staying together and uh, staying positive. Because I tell you, you can really get down if you focus on those adversities. So we had to focus in on our, you know, uh, successes and, you know, our advantages. The beautiful thing about it, because we had such unity, such great leadership from Alec Kessler and from Leterio and from Rod Cole, that we were able to blend together and everyone played to their max. That was a great game for us and Coach Durham put together a great coaching plan of implementing the Shaq attack rule. And we fouled Shaq like you can't imagine and as a result, I do have 12 stitches in my left eye from a few fouls. Um, so I hit three free throws and we ended up going into overtime and winning the game and I think that was a, a great turning point for our season. We were playing good basketball anyway, but nobody expected us to go into LSU and be the team that had Shaq and Chris Jackson and Stanley Roberts and uh, a lot of host of other guys. I mean, they had, we were just looking at the stat sheets. Those guys had, they had some really good players on that team. So uh, it was a great win for us. Uh, and again, it gave some of the other players, Jody and some of the other guys that, you know, played reserve roles, gave them great confidence, you know, to close the season out. I think it was like four seconds to go. We had made a comeback. Cole goes up from behind the line and strokes a three, no good, but he got fouled. We're on the road, they got a three point lead. He steps up there, strokes it, now they got a two point lead. He goes back up there, executes again, now they got a one point lead. He goes back there and now the crowd is, they want to go wild, but they're a little shaky because I mean, and Cole strikes another one. Okay, now it goes overtime. They jump out in the overtime and Shaquille O'Neal is on the line with 57 seconds to go in a seven point lead. We start and that might, I don't know whether we were the first ones because he was a freshman, but if we weren't first, we weren't far behind with the hack a shack Because we go down and with six seconds, I think that was right, with six seconds on the clock, we were up five. We had a 12 point turnaround in 56 seconds. But just watching that game, I'm like, whoa, you know, this team, you know, has that it factor. And that it factor carried them into winning eight of the next nine SEC matchups and being undefeated at home. A hungry LSU team was determined to come into Athens and try to break that streak. The atmosphere for the home game versus LSU here, Sunday on CBS, was, if I can recall, outside of the Final Four year, was the biggest home atmosphere that Georgia has ever experienced. Coming over to the shoot around on Saturday, coming into practice on Friday, you saw camps. It was like Kville up in Duke. The excitement was there. And because of that excitement, that energy, I, no one slept. We didn't sleep all night long. Come into that game, being down at 19, by 19 at halftime, we still didn't feel down on ourselves because we knew the energy was still here. The passion, the fans, everyone still had hope and we had hope. But it wasn't a basketball game. It was more of a heart, what kind of heart and determination we had. And all year long, we have fought, we have fought, we have fought. The atmosphere leading up to the game was like nothing I've ever been involved with in my life. Um, I had probably 35, 40 family members looking for tickets and uh, to see people camping outside of the Coliseum was something that I'd never imagined, you know, my wildest dreams and I mean just the excitement leading up to it, it was tough to just even calm down and you know because you got so hyped because you're talking about an LSU team, you know, that, you know, really great players and coming in here and, and uh, us having an opportunity to do something that no other University of Georgia basketball team had done in history. Uh, was big. I mean, just to, you know, us being uh, 18, 19, 20 year old kids, I don't think we even had a clue as to what was going on, you know, looking back on it now. I mean, it was tremendous. I mean, the, the, the electricity around the Coliseum, 
Um, I've never experienced anything like it. And coming into the game, it was just unreal. We came out fired up and ready to go. Uh, the thing that I can remember most is the intensity on Latero's and Alec and Rod's face going into that game. It, I mean, these guys were focused, they were intense, and we were ready to play. LSU is, is, is in the running. They come into Athens, and at halftime, we're down 17 points. We come back and we really play well in the second half. We get there, and I believe it's tied in Neville Austin. <laughs> and I, I don't think Neville would get mad at me if I would say, <laughs> We wouldn't have picked, if we picked him to go to the line, okay? Now, there's a lot of things we would pick for Neville to do, and we'll get into those somewhere here. But going to the line would, and I think he banked it in. Uh, I actually had the ball, and I lost it. And I went down and grabbed, and I said, you know what, I gotta keep my pivot foot. So I grabbed my pivot foot, I was down on the floor, and I spotted Alec, and I threw it to Alec, and he hit Neville, and uh, Neville drives and gets fouled. And I remember going over to the bench and, and looking at Neville's eyes, and I'm like, Nev, it's okay, you know, because Nev's one of my best friends. I'm like, Nev, just relax. It's just like being in the backyard. Because I was taken from the experience that I had at LSU, you know, and where my mind was. And I'm telling Neville, hey, look, go another place. You're okay. Just relax. Just relax. It's just like being in the backyard. Just looked at him and smiled, and, you know, he, I could tell he was nervous. I'm like, Nev, just calm down. It's okay. You know, so Coach Durham gets in the, in the huddle, and he kind of smiles at Neville, and I'm like, all right, big guy, you know. Um, and, and never goes up there and hits the first one, which is which is, is huge, you know. You know, um, Neville Neville was awesome uh, during practice. He he was uh, very nervous, you know, sometimes during the game. And uh, so I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, I, yeah, I, I had a, a good feeling he would, but I was very nervous. <laughs> I was confident that he could hit one out of two, but he ended up doing well. So you know, we. Uh, we expected a lot out of each other. That's just the way we practiced. Uh, we challenged each other every day in practice. And I think that was the, the one thing I remember about that season, about my experience playing on that championship team. Nobody, nobody. They can tell you all the lies they want. Nobody in that entire arena, including Coach Durham, believed that Neville Austin, in the heat of the moment, in front of 15,000 fans, national television, a CBS game, would step up there and make the front end of a one and one but he had confidence in himself and uh, you know he tipped us to the point where we ended up beating LSU by one point on Neville Austin's free throw he'll never forget that we knew hitting that one free throw could change our opportunity of winning the SEC championship sure enough when he hits that free throw then all of a sudden he misses the second when the clock goes alive and it runs down and this whole entire community, not just State Coliseum, the community erupts. And I still get chills just thinking about it, running on the floor, jumping up and down. I remember hugging Rod, Leterio, uh, uh, Alec and Kendall, everybody just hugged and kissed each other because we felt like we just uh, won a national championship. But that feeling of winning a championship and the way that we did with the character that we, hit, we had uh, was special. And never Austin. What more can I say about that one free throw that he hit, that one free throw that changed the history of Georgia basketball. Now the SEC regular season title was a real possibility if the Dogs could beat either Tennessee or Auburn. Florida upsets LSU. Now we got a chance to lock it up. If we beat Tennessee, we don't beat Tennessee. Now we come back. If we lose again against Auburn down there, we will tie for the championship. All week long, or the next four or five days, was if we go to Auburn and we clinch it, uh, or we win that game, we clinch it outright. This is something that's never happened in the history of Georgia basketball. And I think it was 57 years. So. Me, with the mentality, uh, and Coach Anderson, uh, who was the associate head coach, he was the reason why I came to the University of Georgia. Uh, you know, um, the entire 
bus ride to the gym. Uh, and when I got off the bus, he just told me, he said, Material, listen, um, these are the moments that you live for. You know, you can't, you know, choose how people will remember you. You just hope they do. If you, I think that was probably my best game of the season. Uh, you know, I remember I had 30 points, you know, six or seven rebounds. I mean, I played like, you know, um, there was no tomorrow. The entire team, you know, we, we knew what was riding on this. We had a chance to make history and be remembered, you know, forever in the annals of Georgia basketball history. And, and it was just a special, special day. Magical, I'll never forget that. We played so loose, so relaxed, but we played aggressive as you can, I can remember. I mean, everyone was in attack mode. The bulldog was out, the fight, the bite was there. And we went in with the head first, and coming out of that game, it was just so much energy, so much excitement. Going down, I remember everything. Coming back, it was such a blur because you just had so much energy, so much excitement, and it, you couldn't sleep, you couldn't eat, you just were so excited about the first regular season SEC championship, and we were the ones to bring it home here to the University of Georgia. Going into that game, we had no intention of losing that game. I mean, it was to, to us, it was, it was like having a home game because there was no way we were going to let Auburn stop us from winning the SEC championship. We had worked too hard and came too far uh, for that to happen. Uh, there was no laughing and joking before the game. It was straight business. Everybody's attitude was straight business. Um, going into that game, we expected to win that game. I mean, to me, uh, Auburn would have had to put on a heck of an effort and, and shoot the ball lights out to beat us that night. I mean, we were really, really determined. So we go into the game, and may, yeah, I think our guys, I think they were looking forward to playing, they were excited about playing, and they came out and they played really good. Alec had a good game. Uh, Lutero had a good game. Uh, everybody had a good game. Uh, we played good defensively. We, we, we played well as a unit. Uh, and that was one of the things that set, that, that enabled us to have the success that we did. And I've talked about everybody played their role. We were fortunate that we had people coming in off the bench and contributing all year long. Well, it was definitely nice to uh, contribute. Being a freshman, I didn't get you know, to play a, a ton, but uh, you know, the, the minutes that I did get to play, um, I do remember that Auburn game a lot. And, um, and that was, uh, fun for me to be able to contribute and um, that Auburn, uh, what I remember most about it was after we won, um, getting the escort home, the, uh, the police at the uh, you know, George State line were, were waiting for us there and, and they take it, took us all the way back to Athens and we had a, we had a huge party. Um, Mike Heron and Alec Kessler uh, were in the back of the bus and uh, uh, that, that was just a great, great memory for me. And, um, um, just all the way from uh, Auburn all the way back to uh, Athens it was a it was a great time and getting to see a bunch of fans here waiting for us at home too was really neat. It was a surreal moment you know like this is happening to us you know a team that you know were the underdogs and we approached every game as the underdogs but you know for it to come true um, you know guys were just holding their heads you know hands over mouths like I can't believe this. I mean, uh, it was wild. It was really, really crazy. And, and, and it was just something that with this team, you know, at that moment, it was a testament to all of the hard work, you know, all the tears, blood, sweat, you know, preseason conditioning. You know, there were times where a lot of guys wanted to quit and give up. It was just a testament to, you know, it's not the race isn't given to the swift or the strong, but to the one that endured to the end and we had to win that thing the last game of the season. You know, we went all the way to the end and uh, clinched it. Just, just magical, just special. This, this was really uh, something special. Uh, and, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, as the years go by, you forget what the scores were, but you don't, you, you don't forget the the players and and the relationships. And this group, they liked each other. And off the floor, I, I think they came together. Uh, and we did have good chemistry because we had good guys. I mean, uh, 
we, we, had, we had good people uh, and they were talented and they came together as a group. Uh, and we played, we played better as a team than we did as individuals and we had good individuals. But as it, you know, as it, we were able to win the championship. Well, that, that's that's the thing, um, you know, that is so special. We didn't understand it when we were there. And Coach Durham, you know, Coach Sloniker, Coach uh, Anderson, uh, Coach Razettes, you know, who was special to us. They always used to say, "Guys, you know, these are your brothers. You know, this is your family. Uh, this is something that you guys will be able to look back on." You know, for years and years and years, these teams, this camaraderie that you guys experience, it, it can never be taken away from you. Um, and 25 years later, um, you know, just being able to come back and fellowship with all the guys that, you know, we had so many battles uh, on the court, uh, so many tough practices. Uh, you know, we didn't like each other at times during the course of the year. Just to come back 25 years later, uh, there's no feeling you know, like it and just to be able to put our arms around each other and reminisce about what we did. You know, we submitted our legacy uh, forever in the history of University of Georgia basketball and that's special.